on today's show, GM denies previous reports that it isn't supporting the Spark EV and says supply disruption was to blame for claims it's no longer stocking replacement batteries. The government of Saudi Arabia makes a massive order of Lucid Air sedans with a view to potentially doubling that in the future. And Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter causes Tesla stock to fall as he sells a massive amount of Tesla stock in order to help fund his Twitter purchase. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. We start today with a very important clarification, development and correction to a story from last week. As our final story in last episode, we covered a news report from EV Resource, which claimed via an anonymous GM district executive that Chevrolet was no longer going to supply replacement battery packs for the Chevrolet Spark EV. A few days ago, GM went on the record to reiterate that while there are currently no more Spark EV batteries in inventory, it is committed to rectifying the situation and will continue to supply Spark EV owners with replacement battery packs if their cars require one. It appears that the ongoing global shortage in EV batteries, combined with GM's ongoing Bolt battery recall, are partly to blame. GM does not appear to know when it will have replacement battery packs in stock for the Spark EV, but it is good to see this story have a happy ending. We always work our hardest to double check our sources and for our part in failing to do proper due diligence on that story, we're sorry. We've seen a global downturn in the number of new vehicles being sold around the world as parts supply chains for the auto industry remain incredibly constrained. Yet new figures out for the first quarter of this year show that US electric vehicle sales in the first three months of the year soared to an all-time high of 208,411 vehicles. That is up significantly on the 160,000 or so sold in the fourth quarter of last year and puts the total new electric vehicle registrations since late 2010 at 2.642 million. California accounted for nearly 40% of all the EVs sold in Q1. And although California usually accounts for 10% of all new cars sold in the US annually, it does show that other states have a lot of catching up to do. A week after Toyota priced its BZ4X electric crossover, Subaru has revealed official pricing for the Solterra, a vehicle which shares the platform with the BZ4X. Starting with a base level price of $44,995 before incentives or delivery charges, the Solterra is, on paper at least, nearly $3,000 more than the Toyota BZ4X. However, if you look at the specs, you'll quickly note that the two base models aren't equal. While Toyota's entry-level model has a 150-kilowatt front-wheel drive-only system, the entry-level Solterra has a 160-kilowatt all-wheel drive system, identical to the all-wheel drive variant of by Toyota. Toyota charges a little less for its all-wheel drive entry-level model, all by about $900, but it's important to note that while Subaru's Solterra will be eligible for the $7,500 of federal tax credits, Toyota's federal tax credits are just starting to phase out. So the Subaru might be a more prudent choice. We often talk about how electric vehicles get cleaner as the grid gets cleaner, and having just come to the end of the first year of owning solar panels on the roof of my home, I can certainly attest to the benefits that come from green energy generation. And this week we learned via Think Tank Ember that last month, for the first time in history, the United States generated 18% of its total electricity from wind and solar, with 59 terawatt hours of green power going to the grid. This beats the previous record set in March last year when 53 terawatt hours were sent to the grid. While 18% is still nowhere near the lion's share of the electricity used in the US, it shows promise. Sure, Europe is ahead with many now producing one quarter of their electricity from renewable sources and every nation needs to reach 20% generation goals by 2025 in order to achieve net zero emissions targets. But it is a start in the US. Now we just have to double down and speed things up. There is no excuse.
We've talked before about gasoline super users, folks who use more gasoline than the average person. A few weeks back, we told you how the state of Washington plans to study super users to figure out how to get them to convert to an electric vehicle. But this week, the California Assembly Transportation Committee passed a bill that directs the California Air Resources Board to base incentives for EV purchases on how much gasoline or diesel current vehicle owners use, as well as their income level. The idea is pretty simple. Those who are on lower incomes often are those who could benefit the most from the savings of EV ownership. But they are also required to make long-distance commutes in older, beaten-up vehicles to get to and from work, thus using a lot of gasoline. While this needs to be passed by the California Assembly before becoming binding, it would go into effect in two years' time if successful. Bright Drop, General Motors' commercial delivery arm, may not get a whole lot of public attention, but it's been working hard for the past year or so to bring a series of commercial electric delivery vehicles to market, ranging from pedestrian-operated delivery vehicles to full-size delivery vans. Some of its vehicles are already in service, and this week one of those vehicles, a Bright Drop Zevo 600, previously known as the EV600, drove from New York City to Washington, D.C. on a single charge while carrying out a delivery. While that kind of trip, a distance of nearly 260 miles or 418 kilometers, might not be a huge thing for most modern EVs, it is still a long schlep for any large commercial vehicle. Admittedly, the truck has a payload of 2,200 pounds, just under one metric tonne, but it's still impressive to see a delivery vehicle cover this much range without cargo on board. Although nobody has said how large that load actually was. EV startup Lucid Motors has long held a relationship with the nation of Saudi Arabia, thanks to the massive investment that the nation's public investment fund made in Lucid several years ago. It's been known for some time that Lucid was aiming to build a new production facility in the country, with the Saudi factory expected to produce significant numbers of Lucid Airs for shipping across the Middle East, Asia and Africa, among others. But this week, the government of Saudi Arabia took the relationship with Lucid one step further by signing an agreement to purchase a minimum of 50,000 electric vehicles from the company over the next 10 years as an attempt to diversify its fleet. As part of the agreement, an additional 50,000 vehicles may be purchased by the Saudi government, meaning that potentially 100,000 Lucid Airs could be on the government's fleet in a decade's time. While many are unhappy about the nation's civil rights record, including myself, it does certainly appear that Saudi Arabia is doing good things for Lucid. Legacy automakers looking to make their first stumbling steps into the EV marketplace have often taken an existing internal combustion engine vehicle platform and then tried to shoehorn an electric drivetrain inside. These vehicles, usually compliance vehicles, have a reputation for being significantly compromised, either in internal space, range or performance. And in recent years, we've seen a move away from that with automakers either developing brand new platforms for EVs or designing platforms capable of easily accommodating a range of different drivetrains. But now Mercedes-Benz has confirmed that the tables will soon be turned for its vehicles, with future platforms getting designed as EVs first and then having internal combustion engine drivetrains shoehorned in as required. Sure, I'd rather see ICE vehicles not be made, but I think it's kind of funny to see how times have changed. I wonder if those ICE vehicles will be as compromised as those early EVs were. General Motors has quite rightly, come under a lot of criticism in recent years, both for the past actions of its executive team and, more recently, for its trying to deal with the Bolt EV recall, not to mention some of the claims made of its position in the EV world. But this week, we had some promising news from the company, namely that it will now start tying the compensation packages of its executives to its performance in the EV space. Essentially, if the company doesn't meet its EV goals, then executives at the company won't be getting their nice big bonuses. And while people do tend to work harder on achieving goals if they think there's a big payout attached to it. That's true of any industry. I mean, Elon Musk just earned himself a massive payout because he helped Tesla reach a series of goals set out a long time ago. So if it works for Tesla, let's hope it works for GM too, because more EVs equals more choice for us consumers. Elon Musk managed to cause Tesla's share price to go down this week, not by making a tweet about the company, but by selling off around 9.6 million shares worth a total of $8.4 billion. 
The reason? Musk's planned purchase of Twitter, the offer for which was officially accepted by Twitter earlier this week and would see Musk become the sole owner of the social media platform. Since Musk announced his plans to buy Twitter, Tesla has lost about 20% of its value, although the price is slowly ticking back up. While it's important to note that this story is only loosely connected to EVs, because we're talking about Twitter, Musk has promised to secure $25.5 billion of fully committed debt in order to buy Twitter. That's made up of $13 billion in loans secured against Twitter and $12.5 billion of loans secured against Tesla. For investors, that latter fact has left some feeling less confident about Tesla than they once did. Oregon electric vehicle company Akimoto is an electric vehicle company like no other. It has broken pretty much every single stereotype about EV startups, and its three-wheeler FUV is incredible fun, as is its Roadster. And yes, we have reviewed both. There are links below. But there's one Akimoto variant that we've eagerly wanted to get our hands on, but haven't quite yet the Cameo. It's an Akimoto FUV that's had its rear roof section removed and its rear seat rotated 180 degrees to point backwards. Its purpose? To be a truly awesome camera vehicle for the company, and also filmmakers everywhere. We've been promised the original Cameo to review, fingers crossed, but this week Akimoto CEO Mark Fronmeier announced on Twitter that the company has begun making new Cameos. It's got a goal of selling or renting them to the film industry. It is such a clever idea, and I, for one, cannot wait to try them out. And finally, the US Postal Service, specifically the USPS under Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, has seemingly tried every trick in the book to claim that electric vehicles just aren't up to the job of US mail delivery. Sure, the post office has ordered a few electric trucks for inner city mail, but the majority of the new mail trucks being ordered are internal combustion engine ones. Because, I don't know, maybe DeJoy thinks EVs can't handle long distances or cold weather. Except that's not true, and it's just been proven in the most awesome way. See, Norway's postal service already uses a massive number of electric trucks to deliver its mail come summer or winter weather. But now its most northern territory, Svalbard, you know, where the big seed bank is, has also gone all electric for its delivery vehicles. Svalbard can get down to negative 40 or below in the winter, and the Postal Service says its electric trucks are handling that weather with aplomb. Now tell me, why is it that the US Postal Service can't go electric again? And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this very channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. There is a slim possibility that I might not be here next week due to a pre-existing medical appointment, but if I'm not, we'll be back soon with more awesome content. So until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.